Today we are proud to induct our newest distinguished members of the 506th Infantry Regiment. These Kurds, these Kurds have distinguished themselves in the highest tradition of military service and are more than deserving of induction as a distinguished member of the 506th Infantry Regiment. In both peace and wartime, these men and women proudly carry the banner of excellence while establishing and preserving the heritage of the 506th Infantry Regiment. The Brigade Commander, Colonel Valerie C. Cavney, Jr., the Brigade Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major William R. Hamburg, Jr., and the Honorary Command Sergeant Major, retired Robert G. Nichols, will now present the distinguished member of the regiment's certificates and regimental pins. In recognition of outstanding contributions to regimental continuity, tradition, and esprit de corps, by order of the Secretary of the Army, the following individuals have been granted and assigned the distinction of distinguished member of the 506th Infantry Regiment on this day, July 20th, 2012. Herbert J. Seward. Herbert J. Seward Jr., a veteran of Easy Company, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, the Band of Brothers in 1944, received his baptism of fire in Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge and was badly wounded outside the village of Foy, Belgium in 1945. He has a long-standing community environmental leadership role and is still active with the schools in his community talking about the war, his experience, and lessons learned. Currently, he serves as president of the Men of Easy Company organization with an active, as an active supporter of the Wounded Warriors program and the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon program, and was a major influence in the fundraising for the Kurahi KIA Memorial. Major General Retired Benjamin Harrison. Major General Retired Benjamin L. L. Harrison, whose enlisted military service began in 1946, was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the infantry <clears throat> after earning his bachelor's degree in 1951. In his first tour of duty in Vietnam, he commanded the 10th Combat Aviation Battalion in 1966 to 67, followed by a series of assignments with the Pentagon. Following his promotion to colonel, 1970, at the request of the 101st Airborne Division Commander, he was given command of the 3rd Brigade, 1st Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment, and 2nd Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment, making him the regimental de facto commander. Harrison remains active with the Currys throughout the Redcourt organization, where the men who served under him in combat continue to enjoy his friendship and leadership. Command Sergeant Major Retired Charles Fitzpatrick. Command Sergeant Major Retired Charles W. Fitzpatrick, who retired from active duty in the U.S. Army after a total of 31 years of service, served, the battal served as Battalion Command Sergeant Major of three battalions, Brigade Command Sergeant Major for three brigades, and also as a Division Command Sergeant Major for a 2nd Infantry Division in Korea. He was assigned as a Command Sergeant Major for the 1st of 506 Infantry Regiment from May 1991 to June 1992. Mr. Fitz currently works at Fort Campbell Kennard Mission Training Complex as a chief for plans and operations and resides in Clarksville with his wife. James H. Campbell III. James H. Campbell III served as a platoon leader in Company C, 2nd Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment in Vietnam in 1970. Jim participated in numerous battles leading up to the seizing of Firebase Ripcord from March to April 1970. During the siege of Firebase Ripcord from July 1st to July 23rd, 1970, Jim fought in numerous engagements to defend the Firebase from direct enemy assault. Following his military service, Jim committed himself to an exemplary career in the legal profession in his hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana. John O. Lally. John O. Lally who served as a squad leader and platoon sergeant in Company A, 1st Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment in Vietnam, separated from the U.S. Army 
and began to serve the people of the state of Minnesota as a public servant. Glad we continue to serve the 506 Infantry Regiment by joining its association and volunteering in a variety of capacities. He is a past president of the association, currently serves as a member of the board of directors, is a newsletter editor, and a media committee chairman. He continues to volunteer his time freely and works tirelessly on behalf of the active duty troops of the 506 Infantry Regiment, 4th Brigade, and the members of the 506 Association. Gladly also currently serves as the chairman of the board of directors for the 506 Association. Nicholas W. <coughs> Miller. Entered, Nicholas W. Miller entered military service in Salt Lake City, Utah in November of 19, 1966 as a combat medic. Nicholas was assigned to Company C, 1st Battalion, 506 Infantry Regiment, and served with the Kurdis in Vietnam. During his tour, he received a Silver Star and a Bronze Star with the V advice for Valor. Nicholas also served with the Utah National Guard's 144th Medical Evacuation Unit in support of Operation Desert Storm Desert Shield until he completed his military service of 21 years. From 1976 to 1989, he worked as a therapist, mental health, and substance abuse counselor. From 1989 until his retirement in 2010, he worked as a Veterans Affairs Therapist, helping veterans with PTSD and addiction issues. Donald Dodson. Sergeant retired Donald E. Dodson served as a rifleman and team leader with Company C, 2nd Battalion, 506 Infantry Regiment, until March of 1971, after which he was medically retired. After earning his Bachelor of Science degree in 1977, Mr. Dodson was accepted as a special agent with the U.S. Treasury, US Treasury Department Bureau Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and then in 1989 as a special agent with the U.S. Department of Energy. Office of the Inspector General, Office of Investigation. After 24 years of government service, he retired and spends his time with his wife of 38 years, Anita, and his son, Gregory. <laughs> Mr. Gary, Gary A. Radford. Staff Sergeant Gary A. Radford served, served with Company D, 2nd Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment during the Vietnam War. Uh, during the Vietnam War, beginning in 1969. After being wounded in action along, along Ashaw Valley, he reserved his first Purple Heart and Silver Star. He was wounded again on July 7, 1970, on Firebase Ripcord, after turning down a job at Eagle Beach in order to return to his old unit, Company D, 2nd Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment. Dr. Sermolito Archangel. Carmelito Sunny Archangel served in 2nd Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment from August 1969 to April 1970 as the company commander of Company B, where the battalion began the Ripcord Campaign. After the Vietnam War, he earned his medical degree at Rutgers Medical School. Archangel specialized in emergency medicine at Brook Army Medical Center and assisted planning medical support for the Iranian hostage operation. After retirement from the U.S. Army, he was recalled to active duty to Desert Storm and served in a medical support unit during the offensive against Iraq forces in Kuwait. He is currently an active member of both the Curry and Ripcord associations, gathering often with Vietnam veterans and reaching out to others. Command Sergeant Major Alonzo J. Smith entered the Army in August 1984 and graduated from one, one station unit training at Fort Benning, Georgia as an infantryman. Command Sergeant Major Smith served with the Kurdis with 1st Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment in Korea. His previous leadership positions include Battalion Command Sergeant Major for the 1st for, for Battalion, 502nd Infantry Regiment, and Brigade Command Sergeant Major for 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne. Air Assault. Currently, Command Sergeant Major Smith is serving as 101st Airborne Division Air Assault Command Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major Hector Santos. 
Sergeant Major Hector L. Santos enlisted in the U.S. Army as an infantryman in 1987. During his 25 years of service, he's, he has served in numerous leadership positions to include serving more recently as Battalion Operations Sergeant for 2nd Battalion, 506th Infantry Regiment, after which he was assigned as a 4th Brigade Combat Team's Operations Sergeant Major. While serving in both these two positions, Sergeant Major Santos deployed with the Kurdis in support of Operation Enduring Freedom 6 and 9. Major Mark Fedorovich. Major Mark D. Fedorovich, who was commissioned as an infantry officer upon earning his bachelor's degree in international relations from the George Washington University, D.C., has served in several leadership positions, such as a company commander for headquarters and headquarters company, 2nd Brigade, 1st Armored Division, Germany. He has also served as the executive officer and operations officer for 1st Squadron, 61st Cavalry Regiment, and as a 4th Brigade Combat Team Operation Officer. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for these newly inducted courteous citizens. Make prior a documentary film producer recently accompanied the Kurdis on their deployment in support of Operation Enduring Freedom 10 to 11. Her, field, her film, Outside the Wire, highlights the daily efforts of Kurdi soldiers as they conducted numerous engagements, combat, patrol, and humanitarian efforts alongside their Afghan counterparts in the Paktika province of Afghanistan. Outside the Wire is scheduled to be released in late 2012. retired 30-year U.S. Army veteran who served in World War II, Korean, and Vietnam Wars. In 2004, she became a member of the Robert F. Sink Memorial Library staff. Growing interest in the 506th Infantry Regiment after the daughters of Colonel Robert F. Sink donated some of his artifacts to the library in 2010. After hearing the words and dedication regarding the 506th Infantry Regiment, 4th Brigade soldiers passed and present by Colonel Sean M. Jenkins and Command Sergeant Major Timothy Coop during that ceremony. Her dedication, uh, her dedication in serving the library and regiment bonded became newly founded. Her first contact with the 506 Association later resulted in the generous donation of the Kurahi battle flag that hangs in the library common area and many other items. She has since made sure that the library represented during Honor Eagles, the Kurahi Rendezvous and Kurahi Reunion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we would like to invite Mr. Alexander Almhoff, President of Operation Market Garden Commemorative Committee, to speak in regards to his continuing dedication to the Koreans. Good morning. In 2003, we were doing the preparations for the 60th anniversary, uh, 60th anniversary of Operation Market Garden. We were working for the World War II 60th anniversary committee. We went to all the cities where Operation Market Garden took place from Eindhoven to Arnhem. What we found out in certain cities is that certain people that fought during, during Operation Market Garden were not really properly honored. In the Arnhem area that was General Sosobowski and during a meeting in Eindhoven we found out that uh, Major Dick Winters had never received Unfortunately, due to slow process uh, for recommending him for an award, um, the award couldn't have been presented during the 60th anniversary of Operation Market Garden. And two years later, uh, we received a telephone call from the Major of Eindhoven that Major Dick Winters was going to be presented the honorary citizenship of the city of Eindhoven. 
Unfortunately, because of his age, he could not come to Eindhoven, but on the 18th of September of 2006, uh, during a live telephone call on the city square with tens of thousands of people, the mayor of Eindhoven surprised Major Dick Winters that he was made the honorary citizen of the city of Eindhoven. A year later, a small delegation flew to Hershey and presented him the award. But as humble as Dick was, he could not accept it for himself. He accepted it for all the men he fought with during World War II. And I could get into all the details what Dick has done and what all the men have done during Operation Monkey Garner, but there's one thing that the majority of you are not aware of. A few months before Dick passed away, I was contacted by Dick's daughter regarding a special request in sending books to the Kurdis in Afghanistan. And we contacted his publisher, and on Christmas Day, 3,506 books arrived in Afghanistan uh, just before uh, Dick passed away, and that was probably his last heroic action what he has done. It is for me a great honor to present the official award with approval from the late Admiral Winters. It is the uh, certificate of the honor and citizenship of the city of Eindhoven that I'm going to present to the Colonel Kevney and the Kurdis. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we would like to invite the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault Assistant Division Commander Brigadier General William Hickman and the Commander of the 506th Infantry Regiment 4th Brigade Combat Team 101st Airborne Division Air Assault Colonel Valerie C. Caveney Jr. to the center of the memorial. Colonel Caveney will be accepting the honorary citizenship of the City of Eindhoven on behalf of Major Dick Winters. Brigadier General Hickman will also be receiving a special edition Medal of Honor book. Ladies and gentlemen, our regimental commander, Colonel Valerie C. Cave. And what an awesome way to celebrate our birthday. I mean, just a phenomenal day. And once again, destiny is on the side of the Currys. For those that weren't here last night, we had a uh, storm and we thought it was going to bring the house down. And you can see destiny shining on us. What a perfect day. We started the day with a cake cutting. And in that cake cutting, we had the oldest soldier of the regiment, Sergeant Upshaw from the 801st Brigade Support Battalion. He's 56 years old. And he used a World War II bayonet to cut his piece of the cake to signify our last 70 years. And then PFC Mickey from 161 CAV used the modern bayonet to cut his piece of cake to signify the next 70 years of Curahee history. And no, for the veterans out there, Currys don't eat cake for breakfast. And we did not eat cake before the run, but that cake went over the defect for soldiers to enjoy throughout the day. We thought it was appropriate all 4,000 troopers see that cake cut because that cake is about you and it's about us and we are glad of our legacy and glad to uphold what you created. After the uh, cake cutting, we went on a run. And as Currys do, it was loud, it was controlling, we own the road, and it was a thing of beauty. I mean, it's an awesome thing of power to see these formations on the move, and nothing's going to stop them. And we greatly appreciate all our veterans, families, and friends that were out here to greet us at the finish line and to hear the cannons sound off. It was a great way to start the day, and uh, I think it just set the conditions for the rest of what today will be like. Now formally in inducting true patriots like we just did as distinguished members of our beloved regiment and other honorary members of our regiment makes this day priceless. 
General officers, distinguished guests, families, and friends, we're honored that you join us today in celebrating our 70 years of courage, service, sacrifice, and accomplishment. I'd especially like to thank all of you who traveled to share this special day with us. It's commitment like yours that makes the Currahees legendary. I do want you to know that I spoke with Colonel Sykes last night after his repeated attempts to try and make it here. He went to two different airports, two different airlines, multiple different flights, and just could not make it happen. And, and I want you to know it crushed it. This regiment, like it does to you, means the world to him, and he truly loves those that created our legacy, and he loves those that carry it on. Although he can't be here today in person, we are on his mind, and I want you to know he knows that he's on our mind throughout the day. Today is a day of celebration of our freedoms, our lineage, and of the strength of the Curry Nation. The Curry Nation is as strong as the mountain for which we're named, and we gain that strength from our soldiers, our families, and our friends and from the rock solid foundation built for us that built for us by those that went before it's more than fitting therefore that we take a few minutes out of this great day to pay tribute to those who helped make our reputation one of unparalleled legend a legend which forever has a place in our nation's history the history of our army traces back to 1775 to the militiamen who enabled the birth of our nation since 1775, our Army's risen to meet new challenges, displaying strength of character and unmatched resolve. On the eve of World War II, our nation recognized the need for a special breed of soldier, one who would fly over his enemy, who would land behind his enemy, and would accomplish any mission, though surrounded and outnumbered. What kind of person would volunteer for such a hazardous mission? Like the militiamen in 1775, we found that our nation produced such people. They were physically and mentally tough. They would stop at nothing to master their craft. And they would always do the right thing in the absence of orders or leadership. They would push themselves beyond known limits. They would endure any hardship. And they would give their all for their team, their teammates, and their fellow man. The airborne and the Currahees were born. On 20 July 1942, 70 years ago today, in Tacoa, Georgia, at Currahee Mountain, the 506 Parachute Infantry was activated. It was the first organization which took all volunteers and turned them into the finest fighting force our world had ever known. It took 5,000 civilians to create those 1,800 paratroopers that would jump in on D-Day. Those original Currahees forced and forged a legacy of valor and mission accomplishment and they showed the world that U.S. soldiers operating as a band of brothers could not be beaten. They would accomplish anything. That brotherhood carried them through Europe and back to the United States. And that brotherhood, as you can see, is equally as strong today. The foundation built between 1942 and 45 empowered those that followed. Currahees continue to build on the legend of uncommon valor, indomitable warrior spirit, and absolute dedication. The Currahees of Vietnam fortified our legacy through world famous fights like Hamburger Hill, Firebase Ripcord, and many others. They ushered in the newest in airborne operations, the use of the helicopter for rapid and agile attack against the enemy from the sky. For 20 years, Currahees in Korea lived up to the legacy by standing alone north of the river the most forward unit holding the line against the North Koreans. Those same Currahees did what no other up unit in our Army has done. They deployed from a one-year unaccompanied tour in Korea straight to a one-year combat tour in Iraq. With the establishment of the 4th Brigade Combat Team in 2005, our beloved regiment finally came back to its roots in the 101st. Since then, Currahees have deployed back to Iraq and to Afghanistan twice, each time living up to the legacy handed from one generation to the next. With every deployment, we fortify our lineage and honor the 1,429 Currahees who have made the ultimate sacrifice over the last 70 years, including our 19 Currahees who gave their all in the last deployment. 
Today, once again, the Currahees prepare for whatever mission the nation calls us to, and we will be ready. It is more than muscles and numbers that make us strong. It's an inner strength that we draw from our values, the values inscribed on the base of the seven stones on this monument. These unchanging Army values give us strength of character not only to stand up to tyrants, but to bend down and help the oppressed, the poor, the weak, the sick, and the hungry. These values are the bond that tie us together as a family, the Curahi Nation. Our family is our fellow soldiers, our veterans, our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our sons, our daughters, and our wives, and the countless citizens who support us. This family is represented here today, and this family is our legacy of strength. Our legacy and values give us strength, but it is the personification of those strengths which give us something to live up to, something to emulate. Today we honor 12 great Currahees as distinguished members of our regiment and two honorary members of the regiment. To our distinguished members of the regiment, your service as a Currahee makes you a distinguished American and a distinguished soldier but it is your accomplishments above and beyond that make you a distinguished member of this great regiment. We honor you for your amazing feats of combat leadership and valor while serving in the regiment. We also honor your lifelong loyalty, selfless service, and amazing accomplishments. Your accomplishments are far too many to list, but I would highlight just a few that were not covered in your individual citations. Service as a general officer. Service as a battalion, brigade, and division command sergeant major. Creation of Army-wide military qualification standards. Creation of Army-wide professional development courses and programs. Development of and execution of theory and emerging tactics, which we, the current Currahees, execute, specifically air assault doctrine serving as a state public service executive, serving as a veterans affairs therapist, serving as the president of the Men of Easy Company organization, serving as the president of the 506th Association. And we can never, ever thank you enough for your selfless, active support for our wounded warriors and their families all across the United States and all of our medical facilities. And there is so much more. We can never repay you or adequately honor you, but you must know that you serve as an example for all Currahees, and we are honored to serve with you and to share the name that you distinguished, Currahee. Honorary members of the regiment, we also honor your sacrifice and commitment on behalf of these great soldiers and their families. Your selfless devotion is inspiring and we appreciate all you do to tell our story and honor our troopers. We are honored to bring you into our ranks. Mr. Omhoff, I'd like to thank you for traveling all the way from the Netherlands to honor one of our founding Currahees a man who personifies our regiment and our values on the world stage. Truly, the Currahee Nation is international and endless in its commitment. Loyalty binds us together as Currahees. We serve for freedom, for our values, and for the Currahee Nation. We serve each other, and we serve our fellow man. From the treasure-filled skies of D-Day, to the bone-chilling cold of Bastogne, to the sweltering jungles of Vietnam, the tense moments on the Korean DMZ, the blistering heat in Iraq, and the lung-wrenching mountain climbs of Afghanistan. Currahees have proven their mettle time and time again. We've always done that which others could not or would not do, and we've got 70 years of outstanding success in defense of our nation to show for it. We're honored today to congratulate the latest distinguished members of our regiment and our honorary members. 
DMORs and HMORs, your accomplishment far outlives today. You provide a tremendous example for the Currahees that follow and for our next 70 years. We're proud of you and we're proud to serve with you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join with me again in giving our DMORs and HMORs a round of applause.